everybody. My name is Michael Clark. I run the sales and marketing for Argon, and I have the distinct pleasure of introducing these two great technicians. So right behind me is Jeff, Jeff who works for Argon in our office in San Diego. And what Jeff does for us is he spends a lot of time looking at our products, our draconian products, and helps us really kind of perfect our coloring and schemes before things get out to marketplace. And we also have his partner in crime, Savan, and you may see Savan a lot in the Three Chief Study Group um, in Facebook and Instagram and where else, Savan? Everywhere, right? It's, it's just everywhere. And he has a, he is a great technician, uh, has a lab up in the LA area, and has been a great partner of Argonne's for a while, and actually has been able to help test a lot of our, our products. So we'll send things to Savan, and he'll tell us, he says it works or it stinks. <laughs> And the great thing about Servan is he's always great at telling you exactly the way it is. So if he likes, he likes it. If he doesn't like it, he tells you he doesn't like it. So without further ado, I would like to have both these guys get started. They're going to have some great things to share with me. So thank you, Servan, and thank you, Jeff. Great. Thank you, Michael. Hey, my name is uh, Jeff Rounds. I work for, like Michael said, uh, the R&D product development department. Um, I get to look on the application side of this one, Mr. Paul Cascondas. Um, I'll give you a quick bio on myself. So I think some of the bios were left out of a few of the early magazines and just some embarrassing photos of myself for the month. And then I'll be able to give you some background on the HT Plus material and then I'll hand it over to the uh, real rock star that's uh, that my friends have on. So, uh, quick background on myself I've been a punching bag for dentists for about 26 years. Um, a laboratory in Riverside, California. I come from a laboratory family, so I'll kind of give you some quick photos here. This will be uh, my old man and the fuzzy picture on the left, and the picture on the right where it convinces me at here at one point. But what's most interesting about this picture is the, the photo on the right, uh, young man in the foreground, it's Mr. Jim Glidebo. How many people get to see Jim at that stage in his career? So it's kind of interesting. So here me, you know you're in a dental family when your family photos taken in the front office of the laboratory. This would be me on the right, and I'm pretty sure this photo is kind of like that Simpsons photo where Homer's squeezing Bart's neck. You know, if my dad's eyes are looking over towards me, and my sister's probably protecting me. Nah, that's I, the next photo. I think is about probably around 1996. I'm not sure why I have a grin on my face at that point. I probably wasn't payday. Probably wasn't a Friday because I was probably working the weekend. I, my guess is someone told me at some point monolithic would be an aesthetic maturity. So I was probably laughing. And the picture on the right probably be around 2078. Not, I gotta give credit, I, the picture's been floating around the internet for quite some time. Um, it's probably pretty accurate for most technicians. The only part I see discrepancies that the bench is a little bit clean to be able to go to a laboratory. And then, I'm not sure how I feel about this one yet. This is the photo of the last my son about four or five years ago. You can see he's a traditionalist. He likes his belt drive. He loves his wells. And uh, no, I actually don't know what he was doing there for whatever reason. He just wants to be like dad. And the photo on the right is my little nephew. You can see his choice of reading materials. L2 Magazine. And again, I'm not sure how I feel about this photo at this point. I'm not sure if I want the boys working 12 hour days and seven days a week. but. We'll see. So in 2015, I was fortunate enough to sell my laboratory, and I had about four offers on the table, and they were good offers with very reputable companies with nice compensation packages. And I ended up choosing Argon, and the reason why, you could ask why, is because it, a few, a few reasons. Argon did not start as an alloy company that everyone knows an alloy company. They kind of jumped into the zirconia market and started private labeling someone else's zirconia really took the Wolf's family investment and a ton of R&D to really develop some out-of-the-box stuff and some really innovative things, all while keeping aesthetics in mind. Personally, that, that kind of hit home with me because was it had a very focused laboratory. Also, in the laboratory, we found a lot of offshore competition, uh, especially 15, 20 years ago. It may have faded off a little bit by now. But Argon is committed to USA-made products. The company is manufactured in San Diego. Ultimately, quick commitment to the laboratory. I kid about life in the laboratory, but 
the end of the day, it's what's fed me, it's what's fed my family, and just kind of self-deprecating that way, and but thankful for the opportunity. So getting into the HT Plus material, this is kind of, you may have seen this in Mr. Paul Gascon's presentation. You hear a lot of reference, what is 3Y and 4Y material, that's percent, uh, more percentage of nutrient in the material, and it had to do with strength. So in the beginning, there was Three white material. That was your Broxer, that was your RBZ aesthetics, aesthetic material. That was a very strong um, saying that it's aesthetic is maybe a little bit of a stretch. This is the material that replaced many of our PFMs and was just accepted. It functioned, but it was lacking aesthetically. It was very difficult to shape. It was very difficult to get enough color in the material. Um, again, it functioned, it works, the work, the doctors bought it. So the industry began to focus on the five Y materials, and those would be your anterior materials that are limited to, like, say, three anterior units. Um, the indications were more manual. You can do single unit posteriors with it, and they're beautiful. All the five Y materials on the market are great looking. But everyone kind of neglected the three Y. Three Y was your lab workforce, you know, where all your, your profit margin and your work came from your posterior units, and the three Y material single unit posteriors, they look, yeah, okay, well Argon went, while having a 5 wide material, went and developed a 4 wide material, they found a threshold where strength and translucency kind of peaked. And so, rather than neglecting that 3 wide, that 3 wide and focusing on the anterior materials they designed, they put the R&D into developing this HT plus material. It became stronger, became more translucent, and far easier to shade. All of a sudden, accepted color in a in a uh, acceptable manner. So what Argon has done, following the development of the HD Plus White, is, is develop a product line where we can have the white appreciated, a lip, uh, turnkey liquid system, and now some green state modifiers, and even the ability to order appreciated out of digital. So again, here's some specs on the Argon HD Plus. Um, I overuse this word, but I think it's very applicable to life in the laboratory. It's extremely versatile material. Most people probably would not put a 3Y in the front of the mouth. But the 4Y is completely acceptable there. It works. And you'll see Savon show some pictures of, of some, some great cases with that. Um, it's the new laboratory workhorse. If you had to have one zirconia in your lab, it's going to be the HD+. You know, that's not maybe not the ideal situation, but in that scenario, that's going to be your uh, So 45% translucency, which exceeded the three Ys. 1250 MPA, which also became stronger, and essentially made the, the three Ys pretty much obsolete. And again, new to, somewhat new following the development of the HD Plus was a full range of a comprehensive system that gave quite a few options. So this was the Argon, relatively new Argon shade liquid system. You'll see there's HT there on the left and ST on the right. The HT system is developed for no dilution, 100% concentration, 30 second dip for the HT plus, and the shades are spot on. Initially, Argon's IFU had, and you have to do this company for these shades, and then you gotta buy another company for these shades. That's kind of a pain in the neck. And anyone who uses their company of any manufacturer kind of has to do the same thing. There's a lot of time wasted in the lab doing your own R&D, diluting this, using this brand here, using this brand there. I still see it every day. But the goal was to come up with a comprehensive system where the lab didn't have to spend precious time doing their own R&D, and not being satisfied with the C shades. And that's essentially why the HT liquids were developed. Additionally, we found some customers doing a quick dip, doing a quick five, ten second dip to be able to get their shades light enough on you know, X brand liquid and this brand zirconia. Well, what you get sometimes is not maximum liquid penetration into the dry green state unit. With the, Ar the Argon HT Plus, full on the dry unit, full two millimeters with a pre pre penetration into the unit. So everybody wants two millimeters from the doctor, we never get it. But two millimeters from both sides, you're getting a completely saturated unit. Your doctor has to adjust, they're not in the white spots. Um, on the ponics, you have two millimeters in. If you're adjusting more than two millimeters in, you got bigger problems than the liquid system. It's designed for a 30 second dip, 
New to Argon would be the incisal modifiers. Uh, we will have four incisal modifiers and three gingival mod modifiers that should be available very soon. Again, this is part of comprehensive package one expanded product line for Argon H2 plus. So getting into pre-shaded, pre-shaded material at some point, someone told me monolithic could be a, I'm sorry, monochromatic could be an aesthetic material. I kind of blocked at that too, to be honest with you. So we began the R&D approach, and part of the R&D approach and product input and design the business case is to start evaluating what else is out there on the market. We quickly realized the market, the bar was set so low for monochromatic materials, this became not a Me Too product. This became something kind of different on its own and very successful. And you'll see me show in just a minute how uh, it becomes, it was a very fine line between the chroma and the translucency to be able to achieve the transitional unit from a monochromatic zirconium. And we now have available 21 shades through discs and digital. I'll get to how important that is in just a second, too. This is just a, an interesting photo here. This is uh, just one of the, this is like, you already feel like the shape D4. And if you notice, well, what you can't see is to the left and to the right are cabinets about that size, packed full of zirconia discs. On the other side of the room, there's just as many. And downstairs, there's wall to ceiling storage of zirconia discs. Um, true story, one night I sat up out of a dead sleep about 3 a.m. wide awake and realized there's got to be a weight capacity on those cabinets. Because I had no idea what kind of weight was sitting in that could just my life, I'd walk into work and have this stuff all over my desk. So in examining the competitor's product, we picked up everybody else, everybody's product that was on the market. We abused it, treated it, and fired it just as IFU. And a couple of them came like, this was our first impression of it. So this was one of the markets, one of the systems on the market, and the first thing that that myself and Jeff Lowford thought was, oh, do we eat these? These are like a bad skills. I don't know what, I don't know who uses this or how this would be used. If you take a look at some of those molars, those are like a corn curl in the back of the mouth. I don't care how good a shade is, you're going to be able to do it back. Now, this shade is actually just a reminder that anyone that does any type of ceramics, this is pretty much redundant. But the important view of anything on the die, you'll see the rest of my slides. There's always a coney on the die. Um, I don't think anybody would pull ceramic material out, uh, out of the tray and look at it, oh, it's too late. Uh, of course, you want to put a dye on it, it's still a translucent material, just like you would with your lithium, lithium disilicates. And ideally, maybe a little bit of get glaze fluid on it to be able to start to approach, see how you're going to approach staining this. More competitor analysis. So, your slide on the left is uh, one manufacturer. So you see that they have the value pretty close on an A3. You look and see that's probably in the size of a quarter. You've got a lot of staining to do still. It could happen. The one on the right, their approach on an A, I guess on an A3, the majority of the rest of their system with this man, this particular system, it matches that that neck. I mean, in my opinion, that'd be that'd make a great framework. But I mean, if you can stain anything with that and make it work, my hat's off to you. If you can get a patient doctor acceptance with, with that material, then uh, you have my respect. So here, this would be a uh, little bit different. This is the approach on the argon free shade. So if you notice where I have this box line, is really about right where the incisal and the chroma start to transition. You need just enough. There's, the material is translucent enough to be able to hit the incisal. There's just enough chroma where you're not going to have a ton of stain. Now these are all actually R&D slides. These are not fancy marketing slides. One of the factors in determining on what's, whether the shades will fly or not is if, if we could literally stain it within 30 seconds. A lot of people approach the, adopt the stain and a one-shot stain and glaze system, and that, that, was, that was very important here. Another thing you'll notice too is if you have to apply stain to, to make a monochrom, monochromatic unit work, the reality is you'd be better staining the gingival half and the body because where you, that's where you want your superficial stain and once your uh, opacity where you have your dent. 
the least amount of stain on the inside. A couple of reasons for that. Maintain that transition, not cover it up externally. And on top of that, once it goes in the mouth, that's just less stain that's eventually going to abrade away. But here's, a, for example, an HT plus A1 pre-shaded. You can see the bonus piece of lint up here. Again, these are in the shades. Um, you know, it's a little bit dry. Photo on the right, that's a 30 second shit stain job. There's nothing fancy. That's two colors. All, most stain systems these days offer A, B, C, Ds, and just very basic blues. We took this into consideration the understanding that this is what a lot of customers are using. So this, that's two colors and 30 seconds to be able to hit the A3, I'm sorry, the A1, to be able to get an incisal translucency. And I could probably just spend a few more minutes on it, make it a little more fancy, but this is this, literally this quick to, a, to be able to achieve a translucent incisal, enough color in that body. And then I've been showing you these super boring interior units. People ask about the low value units. We see a lot of people right toward our D2 and our C1 student with the low value shades and also posteriors. It's quite honestly, the majority of this stuff's probably going to go in the back of the mouth. If this is a, a C1 with again two colors on. It's a little bit of a, of a fade of a blue on those bubble cuss and that's a little bit of a C shade kind of around the gingival and um, extremely minor. I still to my this day, even though this product's been out for quite a while, find myself wiping it right back off because I've overdone it. It really takes that little, little stain to make this work. So we get asked also which whether the white with liquids go appreciated, which would be the better option for your laboratory. Well there's a few different considerations there. It's not necessarily aversives. It's there's, there's a number of things to take into consideration. Some of the smaller labs may just want to stock white by one disc, by liquid system. You got all 16 shades plus bleach. And we're a bit kind of proud of those bleach shades because no one on the market is able to uh, nail and own one, two, and three very well. What they normally do is dilute it. When you dilute, when you dilute your A1 or B1 to try and get a bleach shade, what you get is a really low value. So there's we have special pigments that actually we put into our bleach shades proprietary pigments that actually can high, hit a high value A1 with this material. So the white, you order one disc, you order your, your stains, and you're good to go. Now with the pre-shaded, we found the pre-shaded tends to be a little more forgiving, so if you have more sloppy processes, maybe your ovens fire a little out of spec, pre-shaded tends to be a little more forgiving in that. And if you have maybe a higher volume lab, or you have multiple hands in your zirconia department, not every photo body has the same attention to detail, a little more forgiveness there. Or maybe you are, or also could be your technician skill levels. So on, you might have someone that's a better stain and glaze and people that struggle with shading with liquids on your white. On the white additionally introduces a new variable that could potentially be an issue with just being wet. It's liquid, so it requires adequate dry time. And people that throw this, you know, hot lap this, throw this in a, in a hot oven, can get a steaming effect from it. So with the argon pre-shaded, one thing that's very new and important is a lot of labs don't want to stock an A through D, plus two light shades, plus three, that's a, that's a lot of the kind to sit on. So argon digital nine manufacturers, you can order the same material out of the same lot right through digital. So I don't know how many D4s do you do it? probably done three in my life. You will send argon in your STL rather than sitting on a zirconia disc that gets dusty for 20 years if you never used. So you could stock up on your A1s, your A2s, your A3s, your B1s. And all super important is you can trust that the entire line is consistent. The quality control systems is consistent enough to where you'll often get this scenario, say the end of the year, the doctor calls you and says, I gotta do uh, an, A an A3 on a lower first buy. And at the end of the year, as soon as the, the uh, insurance renews, we're going to do another, the next one, you know, maybe two months away. In this case, this would be a good choice for this material because your D4 or your A1 or whatever is going to be the same one that you redo in two months in January. Um, so I mentioned the D4 quite a bit too, and that be came from a little bit of a conversation I had with uh, the executive team 
in one of our customers. Is the, the D4 becomes the butt of a lot of people's jokes, but really we took that kind of personally because the last thing we want is someone that adopts an A1 D4 plus bleach plus two light shade system. The D3 sucks and the D4 sucks. We're going to buy that one. So we had just as much R&D in the D4 as the A2, the A1. And this will be a couple case scenarios where pre-shaded would benefit you. So you see tonic on the right, mid-facial there is down to about five tenths. And on the, the molar abutment tooth there, you're about nine tenths, which is normal, reasonable. That five tenth becomes a struggle. This footage haunts me in my sleep. I've only done it about 8,000 times, and it's difficult for a reason. Uh, the cookie cutter cases are easy, if you want to make those, but these become challenges. So in this pre-shaded case, you have nice consistency across the super thick phonics and the very thick, thin mid-facial area of, of that cuspid. So that's, a again, case specific, that'd be a great case for, for pre-shaded. When you use white versus with the liquid systems is where you may have a little challenging shade. So for example, this had a little longer enamel layer, a little more color of the chroma. This is that 3D system, which you start to get into having to stand a lot of external if you want to make this work. So the 3 d the white with the liquid system, you get your, your, your process is dialed in, all your colors intrinsic. That's the way to build value to your doctor. Uh, the photo on the right has quite a bit of color in the central fossa without being stained. If this is a, a case where there's heavy occlusal wear, that intrinsic color is not going anywhere. It's not an external stain. So just some takeaways is the from uh, from my presentation before I hand over to Spun is this was an innovative material that the rest of the market neglected. It has the alternate versatility, meaning you have a full product line offering of pre-shaded liquids that are turnkey, white, you have digital options, consistent shades, aesthetic options. And ultimately, Arden's still committed to the laboratory success. So, and that includes your set of options. So, from there, I'll hand it over to my friend Savon. All right, my name is Savon. I uh, work in a lab, Thousand Oaks, California, called Pacific Dental. Um, just to correct Michael, I don't own the lab. I've just worked there since 2001. Uh, my boss is up front, actually. Uh, so just to clarify, I don't own the lab. <laughs> um, so I'll go over why I use Argon, Zirconia, and everything else. I mean, as you can see, this is turn it's turnkey. You got your white, your pre-shaded, your high strength for frames. Everything's there, and soon to be released is the new multi-layer uh, anterior. Uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. Beta tested it. I actually have a sample case if you guys want to see hands-on the true results, uh, you can stop by after the show, after the lecture, and I'll show you. Um, so this is our facility. We have a lecture style. Um, you see on the bottom, lecture style, that's the main work area. Uh, eight benches, all facing either one, lecture, you know, like a school. Uh, this is where all the, the fitting, staining, glazing gets done. And uh, you know all our mills are down there right now. CAD cam is moved upstairs to the picture on the upper right, on the left, and you can see it's a nice environment, stress-free, no high-speed hand pieces, vacuums, phone calls, you know, everyone's uh, a lot more comfortable being up there. And um, that's us uh, having a little barbecue, and uh, that's the kind of work atmosphere we have. Uh, we just gotta keep it fun, live, and uh, friendly, not to be too serious, you know, just, but serious when needed. So why I choose Argon? Um, yeah, honestly, my sales rep is by far the best sales rep I've had hands down with any company. Uh, I got a problem, I call her, and she's on it. She calls Stephanie, she calls Jeff. Within a day or two, not even maybe an hour, I get a response to why this happened or how to resolve it. Uh, they really do care. Um, and it's not just because of I'm speaking for them or anything. I mean, she does this with all of her customers. and. Jeff, uh, I mean, Eric is another extremely great sales rep. I mean, these guys really care. They're here for you. They're not gonna walk in your door and go, ah, oh, here, this is our new product, and sell you on it, and then leave you. 
in midair. Like these guys will actually will be there for you. Um, I went and got a tour. I spoke with Anton a couple of times, and it's literally it's. I have no complaints about how their customer service is and everything else. So, uh, why Argon Zirconia? Um, I can't name the competitor because I still work with them on, on another part of the field, but I mean, look at the picture. There's vitality, there's life, it pops straight out of the oven. This is, this is out of the oven. This is not polished, this is untouched. And you can see, same thing on the, on the other picture, it's not, it just looks dead, it's so bony, it's opaque, there's no life to it. Um, that's, that's where this is the HT Plus uh, aesthetic, was a great try. I, I can't say I was, I tried a disc and I just said it's not for me. So when HT Plus came out, I tried it and I was just floored. I showed it to my boss and said, this is what we use, this is what Arden gave me. And they were like, the night and day difference. He's like, let's do it. So we made the switch and been happy ever since. So like Jeff said, it's a turnkey solution. I mean, there's everything you need. You got your incisal effect, your chroma inhibitor, and I didn't even know now they're gonna have the, the incisal effects come out. Uh, but the liquids are all engineered. The, every single disc you need is right there. You don't really need to shop anymore. I like so-and-so's disc, I like this disc and that liquid. It's all one stop and you, can, you don't have to go anywhere else. Um, this is what we used to do with Zircon Zon and the old liquid. We you know, we'd take but a minute or two just coloring the body color three strokes gingival, two strokes mid-body, one stroke incisal and occlusion, add the violet, the blue, this. It took like three minutes to do a molar. Uh, then we got the gingival pink on the full arches, and uh, it, was just, it was just a hassle. You know, it was never, I mean, I tried doing this uh, aquarel thing, and it just didn't work with the zirconia. And like Jeff says, if, uh, each one, you gotta find it, and you're gonna, you have time to R&D? I don't. I just want something that works, whether it's appreciated or did, um, you know, it, it really worked. So it's engineered to work again. They have your sample kits. If, you, if you're not using it, reach out and ask for one. You know, buy one and just give it a shot and it can't hurt to try. I mean, this is a small investment before you make a giant change. And what I like to refer to is the, kill, the term KISS. It's actually called Keep It Simple Stupid. Because the more the more things you do, the more complex it gets, and the more harder it is to get your your the rest of your team to work with it. So uh, just keep it simple, and this is what Argon really makes it uh, do for you. It's it's very easy. So the HD Plus, um, I use it on everything: full arch, single unit, bridges, posterior. Uh, you can see there's a lower central. My photos don't really judge do do justice to the material. But you can see on the upper, this is a bridge that uh, an office sent out to another lab, and this is what they came to me and said, this is ridiculous, can you redo it? So it's just sure, no problem. We redid it in HT Plus, and I mean, this was taken with my cell phone on the right, but you can see the difference. I mean, look at the life that's in there. I mean, this is just even, just doing a slight touch with a stone and just micro laying and sizal, it makes it pop three times more. So there's you know there's no way you can lose with this stuff. And these are over four implants. So it did a pretty good job of uh, masking everything out. Um, granted, the thickness is there. So I got the opportunity to beta test the new multi. Guys, this is seven layers of transition where everybody else is five. Uh, this is untouched. This is straight out of the centering oven. Maybe I adjusted a contact or two to drop it down. This was done by uh, my anterior designer. And uh, like I said, the photo doesn't do justice, but you can see the amount of translucency in this. There's a single unit, uh, I think this was like an A1 again. Um, again, photo doesn't do justice. Uh, the, you know, up to three, three, uh, three in the bridge. Uh, if you really want to experiment, go four, probably in a lower central, four lower centrals, but nothing more than that. Don't even go back posterior to do it. Um, I mean, I would I want to put an Emax on a third molar or a second molar. You're just asking for a redo. So again, here's the case actually stained and glazed. And when I told the girl to stain and glaze this, I said, just glaze it. 
only put a little bit of blue on the incisal and glaze it. And it literally looks like it was a beautiful stain uh, job that you'd probably do on a monocratic uh, crown or even your uh, porcelain crowns that you do. So uh, it turned out really good and super happy about it. This is the whole case right there. Um, the good trick about this is to get a taller disc. So don't don't get a 14 and cut it in a 14 if your disc is 13, you know, your crown's 13. Get a 16. That way you have a, a larger range to play with positioning your crown in the gradient level. So you, you really get the true value. You know, a lot of people only have 16 and 20 millimeter discs in the multi-layers. Why would I, why are you limiting me to a 20 millimeter disc and a 16? You know, you don't need a 10, you don't need a 12. I think 14, 16, 18, and 20 is the good spot. And this is out of a 16 millimeter and everything's positioned within the same, within our CAM software. So it's equal, uh, but that that's uh, a little bit more going into in depth, but you can definitely achieve a better uh, result with a taller disc, it gives you more room to play with your incisal and your gingival colors. So, uh, lithium desilicate has been the great, more aesthetic stuff out there since Emacs was launched. And then Argon uh, came out with the ST. And this is appreciated ST, it's a value too. So you, it's geared to do the lighter shade, stain down, and achieve what you want. So this is an A2, uh, it came out pretty good, nailed it on the, on the head. And uh, it's uh, great stuff. But the one thing that I always stress everybody is, Treat this like Emacs. It's that translucent. Like you don't want to put this over an A4 shade and the doctor wants a B1. It's not gonna work. Yeah, you could try try like a modifier, paint the inside of the zirconia to block it out. That could affect the outcome of your final. So just treat it like Emacs. If the doctor says, I want to do this, it's like, well, would you put Emacs in that situation? No, well then I can't use this. I can offer you my HD plus you know, with higher opacity and still get the translucency and a beautiful result, or we can go uh, layered. So that's, that's, that's the big thing that I say with anybody using this anterior zirconia or any anterior zirconia, don't use it if you wouldn't use it where Emacs is. So it's, it's just like, again, KISS, just it's a lot of common sense really to, if you have it on the one thing, it's not any different in zirconia, especially with that translucency level. So the one thing I like about the pre-shaded is it's mill clean and center. There's nothing else. Like, I mean, you can just bang it like 50 crowns out, get them cleaned up and in the oven and be out of there in 20 minutes. Um, but like Jeff, the color was right there. The one on the printer model is an HT plus, I think B1. And those are um, an A2 uh, on the molar areas in the, a, the anterior ST. Um, really just glazed on uh, that molar as well. I think the other two have a little bit of stain uh, applied to it. But um, this is an interesting case. I did it and I cut one unit in the multi the appreciated and then I forgot to cut the other and when it was late I cut it last minute and I cut out a white. I was like, and I walked away and I came back the next morning and I said, uh oh, one of them's appreciated, one of them's dipped. I really can't tell the difference. I mean, if you truly look at it, you probably could. Um, the upper is appreciated and the lower is dipped. Uh, both of them have, do have cervical stain, just a touch, but I couldn't tell the difference. And that's, that's pretty, when you do that, it's pretty accurate to what the company's putting out. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. Like if you did appreciate it and you colored it with another one, it might be more chromatic. It might be less chromatic. Uh, so you, you kind of, I'm kind of thankful that either way it works with the zirconia. Uh, and there you go. I think that's a A2 shade, I'm not really sure. And those are the units, yeah, A2. Those are the units uh, straight out of the centering oven. Again, uh, these were done in a cheap light box, so the, the translucency and the chroma is not really all there. But in real life, that was dead on. Uh, you, you could probably just get away with just a little bit of uh, glaze. That's it. Um, so we're going big, and I was under the gun to do 
this right when we switched over to HT Plus and my boss said, we got these cases going out. And I said, well, I don't know how to color these liquids. So the next day I was going to color and fire these. I came back and I said, all right, well, Argon said dilute with the previous liquids from other companies, dilute if it's too dark, do this you know, with water. So I went ahead and figured out a way to do this. So we scan, jump into it. We're just going to scan design this case, uh, not too far into it. We're going to mill it. And, uh, you know, do a big 25 millimeter HD plus in there and press play and let it rip. Uh, I did a couple uh, slides with this, um, like a time lapse, and uh, it was pretty cool to look at it, mill. But it's all milled and done, uh, post processing the units. Uh, not all mills are equal, and uh, unless you spend high dollar to get, you know, these, these VersaMill 5x200s and HyperDen and all sorts of stuff and do some radical offsets and angulation to get into the interproximals. Uh, I really just take about five minutes and uh, process it in the green state. Um, these are all Wagner tools except for the, the wheel, silicone wheel, but uh, Wagner has a great uh, green state kit. I'd highly recommend you guys look into them. Uh, tomorrow at the show, go by their booth. Uh, they're fantastic. Uh, their burrs. The, the white part is uh, very, it's a very fine end and the green is a little bit more coarse. So within eight seconds, you have a sprue, not even docked down to 8,000 RPMs. Uh, Argon actually recommends the Wagner, they like it and whatnot. So I got the okay to drop the name in there. Um, but it's definitely a good thing to go. So see, we opened up the interproximals a little bit, spent a little time um, cleaning it up. I could probably get a little cleaner on the lower uh, 27 uh, gingival junction, but we're gonna put pink over it and uh, it was cleaned up in the end. So now that they're ready to go, uh, just take the incisal effect, just paint it how they, they tell you to in the uh, IFU and the chart. And then uh, I take the green chroma ever and I paint the entire thing. Just paint it with a, with a brush or a water pen. Um, works great inside, outside, all the teeth. They all act as a pontic. There's no crown, there's no prep. Everything's a giant pontic, so the whole thing gets colored. Um, then this is something a lot of people would be hesitant on doing is why would you dip a bridge that big? What's going to happen? That thing is going to get oversaturated. It's going to be so dramatic that you don't know what to do. So I took the liquid and I cut it 20 to 25 percent. Just take distilled water and right where my line is at the bottom over there, the label to the top, that's about 20 milliliters of water added into a fresh bottle. Shake it up, drop it into a dipping jar. Um, Use your choice. Uh, the left one is Iron Clark's big jar, a little too big, but when you get those large arches, it really helps. And then the right one is from B and D. Uh, you can buy them on. You can even buy these on uh, Amazon, like jewelry dipping jars. Just go buy like what eight, ten ounce jars or whatever they are, and uh, just go ahead and use those. Uh, so I dip it 15 to 20 seconds. I know it sounds a lot, but the diluted part actually cuts down. So I was able to do it. So, uh, and the good thing is the liquid doesn't get concentrated from zirconia powder as fast as others would. I mean, I think I've been using an A2 for three weeks and I haven't had to change anything. The, the color's been consistent. And that's a pretty amazing uh, feat for the, for the liquid. So dip it 15, 20 seconds, maybe 10, 15. Let it air dry about 30 minutes. Uh, maybe since it's a full arch, let it go a little bit more. Um, and uh, once it's ready to go, we're going to have to fire it. I do about a 10 hour cycle to get to 1515, two hour hold at 1515, and then an internal cool down. I use a Navitherm P330. Uh, Ivoclar ovens are pretty good. Any oven you use, uh, just make sure it's accurate to the temperature. 1515 is a little bit above what Argon recommends, but I think that's what gives it that little, that additional pop. After you, after you uh, hand drill in a green state, do you blow them off? Yeah. Them uh, no, uh, it's, I, I dry mill everything. I'm not wet milling it. So it will go ahead and uh, I just blow it off with air. You know, good amount, not like 80 PSI. Get like 100, 110 PSI going. Blow it all off and you'll be set. And uh, if not, take a number eight uh, porcelain brush and just go in there and find dust it and blow it off again. 
Um, that works well. So uh, next day I come in, I grab it, and again, photos. This was done on a cell phone with a smile line light. So it's in real life, it's right there on A1. That dilution, the diluted water in the, the little liquid actually aided in getting a lighter color on this large bridge. On a single unit, it would have been lighter than A1. But I got so much mass that I needed that I needed that lighter shade. So go ahead, cut it off, clean it up. Uh, Wagner also sells these as well. I mean, just look at that zirconia. It's screaming, like, with vitality. I mean, I've never seen anything so opalescent right on the mop. I mean, you could probably just polish this and send it off if you really wanted to. So, got it all uh, fit, you know, everything's mounted, ready to go. Time for uh, the pink porcelain. Uh, we got all these, uh, you know, the 1250 MPA. Uh, I haven't had one of these crack uh, just due to stress. I've had one of them crack because the doctor failed to verify the jig and 14 was lower and the bridge broke at like 12 and 11 junction. And they're like, what happened? I ended up finding out that 14 was lower so what happened is it, it stressed and stressed and broke. So we ended up redoing it on a new impression. Everything was fine and it's been good ever since. So uh, our anterior ceramics, I can't really say this, but, but from my experience, but she's taken a lot of courses from Willie Geller. And she said, when you do pink porcelain and you get to, like you have to do more than two millimeters, she said, build it up with a, uh, a body shade of porcelain and then stack it. So, so, okay, well, that makes sense. And then a periodontist of ours that I used to, old co worker, said, What color is your bone? Why is everybody coloring zirconia pink? I says, Your bone's white, right? He's like, Exactly. So, how's your tissue not bleeding that white through unless it gets super thin? So I says, Okay, well, I guess we don't have to do pink anymore. So, that's where I just dipped it and she just literally just went ahead. Obviously, it's a four, four or five uh, blended uh, uh, pink tissue porcelain, and uh, started stacking it. Our design was slightly cut back from the original uh, destination that we wanted, and she went ahead and stacked it by hand. Did some uh, beautiful uh, standing glaze, as you can see. Um, that's the final outcome. Um, after it's, I think before it went into the oven. And there's the final. Um, again, these are done under harsh LED lights. I didn't bring my lights from home for photography until a few cases after this, but this case really, really popped. Um, and again, I, we don't need to do any more pink coloring on the tissue. We just go ahead and do everything A1, A2, B1, and just let it go. And just stack your glass on it, and there you go. So. I think the, the, the G5, G4, G3, the whole combination, the G1 around the, uh, right at the neck, uh, really helps uh, darken it from underneath and lighten it on the top. So ready to deliver, this case went in, dropped right in, doctor screwed it in, made one or two custom adjustments, and that was it. Patient was happy, doctor loved it, and uh, there it is in the mouth. And you can see just those, in, the, the mamelons and the effects. Those are obviously a little bit done into the standing glaze. That's where you can get, really bring it out if you're really good. With that, um, where meal you use, you use Emacs, whatever you want to use, uh, you can really make it pop if you're good at it. So there's this face shot right there, happy camper. And then uh, now this is a different case going in. I mean, you can just see on that edge right there. I mean, you're not gonna get that with any other zirconia. It's been, uh, it's been pretty good. And uh, I mean, I go on and on and on. This is another case all on, another all on sick. This was a big one. We went all the way to the second molar. This is very rare, but uh, got this case in and uh, doc proceeded it fine. And uh, like I said, just go on and on and on. I've been doing this, these full arches like this for a little over a year and we're just growing and growing and this stuff is just holding up. Never had one fracture other than that one. And uh, it's strong enough to do these. Um, you know, a lot of people use white peaks and all sorts of other stuff, but I have I have zero issue with these. And uh, there we go, some more finals. Just beautiful zirconia coming out um, and whatnot. So the accessories I use are water brushes. Uh, I tried Pantel. I tried this um, Derwent. 
uh, you got it off Amazon and this whole bean. The whole bean only has a medium size and it really is good for the the gingival, like the, the chromatic, the monochromatic, uh, the blocker for the chroma. So that's good there. Everything else uh, has got a nice fine tip so you can get those, uh, the perfect coloring on it and obviously the Wagner rot rotary kit and the dipping jars. Um, those are what I use every day for Crown and Bridge and uh, Amazon is where you can get them from and uh, whatever is going to work. So the takeaway, I mean, this stuff is next generation zirconia. I mean, it's, it's just got great results. Uh, I haven't had a bad result come out yet. Uh, it's a turnkey solution, so you go one place, you walk out with everything you need. You don't really need to go, you know, buy different this and that and work with anything. Uh, like I said, it's all engineered to work, so the work is done for you. Just follow the IFU, dip it, blow it off, dry it, off you go. Uh, the strength, aesthetics, it's easy to use. I had a guy who came in, uh, started doing model work, and I said, all right, I want to teach you how to start coloring. He said, all right. Broke a couple of zirconia crowns, cutting them off the disc, cleaning them up, dropping them, blowing them off, flying across the lab. But within a few days, he was doing it, and I walked away. I said, this is the anterior. This is, the, this is when I put a red mark on the zirconia. This is going to be the anterior. Everything else is regular. So you literally, you don't have to be a skilled technician 20, 15, 30 years to do this. You, the guy literally came out of the model work and within two days was doing this. Uh, and he was coloring, you know, and the water pens really make a good, uh, uh, a good tool to use. Uh, and the possibilities are endless. Uh, single unit, three unit, four unit, five unit, six, full arch, upper, lower. Um, you can do it over a bar, you know, whatever you want to do so it's uh it's very good stuff and i'm pretty happy with it so far so other than that just a big thank you to you guys for sitting here and taking the time to listen to me and see what i got to show and argon and everybody else and like i said reach out to your sales rep ask for a demo kit pay for it if you're interested in trying and uh make your make your choice from there i just chose not to follow the entire bandwagon everybody went left i ran right so it's been good ever since, and uh, the new stuff that's coming out is going to be even better. So I definitely keep your eyes open for that multi-layer, and uh, appreciate it as well. That's it.